Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Trade Talk. I'm your host, Nico, uh, and this is the Late Tapes Volume 3. That's right. I'm catching up on my backlog of books that I've read that I've yet to talk about. And uh, episodes will be coming out fast and furious, everybody, <laughs> these last two weeks. Uh, these next two weeks, I should say. Um, so if you, you have you missed the first two, this is your first episode you're listening to. Uh, go back and check out the other two. That's right, Trade Talk is back, and it will be back out on a weekly schedule after these uh, two weeks of the releases of these uh, late tape episodes, which is me basically just catching up on everything I've read uh, that I wanted to talk about after my brief hiatus this past month and a bit here. Uh, so yeah, we're back. So definitely come back and check us out if you have in the past, uh, please. Uh, so thank you to everybody who has stayed a loyal listener and, and is returning. And like I said, it's going to be back on schedule. And when these get released, um, as long as it doesn't interfere with our regular scheduled other programming, like our other shows on Late Night Chat Network, like the Late Night Chat with JT and Nico and a weekly one comic time episode. Expect a new episode until I'm all caught up, basically where I'm supposed to be. So without further ado, let's get into the uh, the trades here that I'm going to be talking about today. First up, we got Marvel Knights 20th. Um, I guess it was the anniversary of the launch of Marvel Knights, basically what helped bring Marvel back out of, I guess, their period where they were bankrupt that along i guess with also you know they sold off a bunch of their rights like spider-man and x-men like the movie deals that they're still trying to they've still been working on getting back like 100 percent fully until this day right to the point where they've made joint deals to be able to use them in their movies so that was a bad period of time after the 90s boom and marvel knights i guess with the launch of joe casada i mean going over there becoming in charge and then as well as um that i guess that maybe followed him and like Jimmy Palmiotti, a lot of people were involved, I guess, with Marvel Knights at that time. But um, most notably, Casada did that book, Daredevil. He drew the art, the interiors in on it uh, with Kevin Smith as the writer, which was a big deal at that time. Uh, again, bringing somebody that was mostly known, uh, known in geek culture, but also as well as uh, a movie director to come and write a book. I guess it was not really done like that back then, as it is uh, now, where novelists and and like yeah, people like write prose and uh, and 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 people that write comedies and all this kind of stuff are all coming out of movies, come out the woodworks and and given these opportunities to uh, to write their stories, right? So uh, you know, J.J. Abrams' son. <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, Marvel Knights twentieth was uh, not good. <laughs> It was written by, uh, you know, I guess they kind of wanted to do something in that same vein of like the characters that were popular at that time. And, you know, of course, Bendis' Daredevil followed in the footsteps of the Casada run and all that kind of stuff. Some great stuff came out around that time. But and this was them pairing up maybe some of their good writers that they currently have some of the, uh, you know, the younger guys that are kind of writing a lot of the popular Marvel books right now. Uh, for instance, Donny Cates, he wrote the first issue. Uh, travel foreman penciled it and he did a good job and then you got two number two and five you got matthew rosenberg and donny cates writing the story on those although matthew rosenberg is um got the uh wrote the script and nico henrichon on art and then you got teeny howard and donny cates vita ayala and donny cates and donny cates on number six issue six with kim jacinto travel foreman uh, and Joshua Casera did our number four, Damian Casera did number three. So yeah, there's a lot of talented people on this book, but I'm not usually a fan of when they mix up the writing duties, um, and even the varying different art styles issue to issue. Sometimes it works. Uh, most of the time for me, it doesn't. I think it's too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't love uh, you know, if you really love what someone is doing in the first issue and then they're gone in the second issue, there's no presence of their writing or skills, a writer or their dialogue or anything like that. And you got somebody else doing it. It's kind of hard to keep that consistency. And I, that's what I thought this kind of series was. It was a bit of a mess, to be honest with you. I just uh, I didn't like the uh, premise of it all that much. Basically, it's like a bunch of the characters that you would have known from the Marvel Knights era or like or just popular Marvel characters that have all forgotten who they are. And uh, the Punisher of all people who's a cop has taken uh, advice from uh, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, the Hulk and uh, or I guess Bruce Banner. 
and like he doesn't like he know he he's aware of what's going on for whatever reason he was put in motion to be the guy that kind of that does know what's happening and uh and uh is helping the punisher uh round people up to uh get their memory back and remind them of who they are and they start out with daredevil at the start first so the punisher is taking uh, advice from bruce banner and basically uh as he's a cop he's going around rounding all these guys up and he's got a list of different heroes that they're trying to bring back like electra and uh who else do they end up bringing back towards the end here? Electra. Oh, Doom's in this. Doom and Kingpin are the bad guys. Doom like knows everything that's going on, and you know he talks to Kingpin and basically gets Kingpin working for him. And you know I think they go against each other towards the end of this. They got they get a, a little bit of odds of themselves as well. Um, yeah, oh yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> and uh, Black Panther, I think it was in this. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's just a lot of reference to a lot of people, and just it's interesting to see kind of where they're at in their lives now that they've forgotten, and how it's slowly coming back to them, and they kind of get brought back together at the end of this and all of them i guess now are aware of who they are and they have to get to the bottom as to why this happened exactly and you know it just was kind of bland for me like i was just like ah, okay that's that's fine like it, it was not it, it it started off way more interesting than i thought the execution was as it pre- like kind of continued into the mini series I mean, it was just kind of dumb from the dumb. I thought I just, yeah, they gave you an explanation as to what had happened. And there were certain elements um, to it that were interesting, but for the most part, it was just okay. And by the time they kind of revealed everything, I was kind of over it as an idea altogether. This series, just because, like I said, it was a little bit inconsistent throughout. It was okay, um, but I would say you could skip this. It wasn't my favorite thing I've read. I was more excited going into it, um, and definitely didn't pay off for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of this characters, it, it's kind of almost like a what if type thing, where or else world type thing, where not everybody's kind of. Um, who they normally are but it's only because of a reason as to why they were put in this position right um so there's reasoning as to why that is it isn't, isn't just something that takes place you know outside of continuity they're trying to make it so it is still but there was a reasoning as to why this happened but it's still uh because there's so many different voices and writing styles in this and and people maybe taking cracks at these characters for the first time it doesn't read that well to me um, so yeah, so that was Marvel Knights 20th. Next up, we got uh, Clue Candlestick. This is um, by IDW. Uh, I guess they have the... Actually, I've seen that they've done Clue comics before. Yeah. Um, the reason I checked this out, I've never checked out a Clue comic before. I'm a fan of the board game. I'm a fan of the older movie. Um, I, this was like an indie artist, Dash Shaw, that was doing this. I actually haven't read anything by Dash Shaw. Like I, I've, I've seen his books before. I've heard him talked about. I thought it was interesting that an artist of his kind of like that's usually known for doing uh, indie type stuff and very abstract like artwork like looking like to me and um it just thought it was an interesting choice this might be something that he's really into because why else would he take up this job right um you know i I didn't think they you know obviously there's money involved in these things but i'm like really like he's he's signing up this guy who sells you know usually does like original graphic novels and is not known like he's not like a superhero artist by any means and like and uh not that this is superhero but and he's he wants to do a clue book i was like okay i like that sometimes when people really have a passion for something they can bring in um or like sometimes things get pitched and for whatever reason the person's really into it or something they want to take a crack at usually that's kind of really interesting so even though I'm not um, that familiar with Dash Shaw's work uh, from reading it, um, I, I was like, okay, I like the I like the conceit of that. I was like, that's an interesting idea to bring him on and do something like this, a clue book. And I like clue enough, and I was like, okay, maybe it's just going to be like unfold like a mystery, like a whodunit, classic whodunit type thing, like Knives Out style. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, I didn't end up liking it. <laughs> Sorry, unfortunately, you're two for two today. I Usually, you know, I don't love everything. Usually, I, I try to be positive about stuff, and but I'm very truthful with you guys, and, uh, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Um, you're not going to love everything. 
Uh, I think it was about three issues that they collected in this clue candlestick. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, it's, it, three issues. But I think the size of the issues were maybe a little bit bigger than usual. Maybe not, actually. They may just be your regular 20 size. Here's the thing. I thought this was too short. Um, that's one complaint. And the next is I just felt it wasn't executed uh, great enough. Like, there was, like there was like crosswords in between and like little activities that you can do and actual clues. And if you really wanted the time to kind of delve into it and, and play all those games and, and take the time with the book, uh, it's, you could tell that it was well done. Did I take the time to do everything? No, I did not. So obviously, you know, maybe my, uh, opinion on that isn't valid because like in execution, I'm sure it was very successful, but, uh, as, as someone who just wanted to sit down and read a clue comic, maybe just have the stuff unfold in front of my eyes and like be told to me and not that I don't want ever want to do work when I'm reading a comic if it's something that's fun I just didn't really um you know I just wasn't really into it to be honest with you uh his arts like I said it's very abstract looking very uh very uh you know unique looking art it's hard to even describe for me that's abstract is the only thing that comes to mind it's very unlike anything else um, the coloring, I think he also colored this himself, um, is interesting, interesting choices being made with like, just like poses and the way that, uh, like panel layouts. And there was some interesting things done in the comic. Um, I gotta say, and it definitely is, it is, it is clue. And, uh, it has all the characters and all the things you kind of would expect, um, I don't know, just for me, it just, it didn't work for me. I kind of, I will say I was on a plane while I was reading this. So maybe my focus wasn't a hundred percent for this type of comic. Uh, but unless you're like a huge Dash Shaw fan, which again, I'm not, uh, admittingly, not that I don't like the man's work. I just really haven't read it. And this may not be the best representation of his work because he is doing somebody else's property. I would say you can pass on this. I, or again, if you're a huge Clue fan, but for me, it just, it was just okay. It was a quick read. Um, I felt that I could have been a little bit more engaged. He didn't really kind of pull me in or make me interested in these characters. And then before you know it, someone's murdered and they're trying to explain all these things. And yeah, he, he may have taken some time to throw out some some uh, some games there for the reader to to play and and uh, you know leave that bread uh, breadcrumb trail for you to kind of follow to figure it out for yourself. So again, I, I have no I, I I'm sure he was successful and and and. If you took the time, then it would have been more enjoyable. But for me, just as a quick read, it wasn't great. Uh, so yeah, that's Clue Candlestick by IDW by Dash Shaw. And last off, we're gonna we're gonna end on a good one, a good note, guys. Don't worry. Uh, this was a fantastic fucking book, and uh, one that's gonna stay with me for a while. And um, definitely one of those few, one of the few books I would say this about. It's just. Uh, uh, not that I just I, that I love the book, but it was um, it was just uh, like not eye opening, but it, it just was like beautiful. Like it really was. Like it's about it's a book about life and perspective and getting older and uh, and family and keeping fa and you know and uh, trying to make uh, make things work. Uh, I'm talking about Ghost Tree. This is uh, written by. Uh, I just want to get the guy's name right here, Bobby Kerno, who I've never read anything by. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure if he's a new comic writer, if he's somebody else that's writing a comic. Maybe he's. Uh, I might have to check uh, check my stats on that one here while I'm reviewing it because I'm not familiar with the name at all. Uh, but art's by Simon Gain, though, who I am familiar with. Colors by Ian he Herring and uh, Becca Kinsey. Um, Simon Gain, you know, he's done some of the Godzilla books. He did. Um, they're not like us, which is an image book written by Eric Stevenson, the co-publisher or publisher, I guess, at Image Comics. Um, I forgot his official title, but yeah, he's basically in charge over there, um, and um, of the publishing, I think. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else he did, but I like his art style. It's really unique, uh, detailed, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know his line work. He does like a lot of stuff with like shading and like, um, and just the way he kind of he is, he draws is very very unique. Like I said, a lot of a lot of different types of line work going on in his figure drawing that you don't really see that often, um, and detailed as well. 
so basically this was about a man who um he he basically has a falling out with his wife like they're kind of on the rocks they they're they're, they're their marriage is not going well. They got married, and he moved to America, and he's living there, and he met a woman. And originally, he is from Japan. And when he was younger, uh, he used to go – he lived there and he used to go and uh, see his grandfather often. And at, on his grandfather's uh, property, he had a, a tree uh, in like a garden area or like in the woods, like a little bit off of his property. Like there's a walkway and like in that area – um, there's a nice tree there, and when he was younger, he experienced like talking to his grandfather, saying that he could see uh, spirits and talk to them, his grandfather, and that when he grows older, he believes that he's going to have the same gifts that he had, and for him to come back and return to Japan to see him, like, I don't know, 20 years from now or 30 years from now, one of those things, like, if you come here in the future, I'll meet you here under this tree, and then you'll be able to um, – You'll you'll be able to see the spirits that I I interact with, and uh, so he does that. I guess like in it's sort of like a midlife crisis or just a crisis in his life. Um, it, when he's younger, he ends up moving from Japan to the states. Like I said, meets a woman, gets married, uh, lives his life, and then one day things aren't so great, and he's looking for family to be around and to. Um, maybe people to talk to and to, for, to be understanding and to clear his head. So he ends up going back to Japan. And when he does that, his grandfather this time had passed away and he actually seen his grandfather's spirit at this tree off of the property. And then he's able to further explain now that you can see that, like that you could see like all the spirits here at this tree, like they stay on our property and they're all ancestors of yours that have decided like they had to like, I guess, die on the property for their spirit to be there. And they've just like, uh, or I guess anybody that may have lived on the property, but I think it's also a lot of his ancestors and like, uh, they People just have refused to uh, move on. Um, so he then starts interacting with the spirits and trying to help them with their problems. And in a sense, like by doing so, he's able to find some solace and like, in, in understanding in his life. And then a girl that he actually had his first uh, romantic uh, fling with back then in Japan before he left – he also ends up encountering at the tree. Yeah, so it's uh, it's, it's people other than his ancestors, because but there is some ancestors there as well. And she uh, was his first love, and basically um, he he ends up connecting back with her, and um, they reminisce about you know the time that they were together, and he kind of ends up talking to her and and feeling better about his own situation through talking with her and and basically it comes to a point where he's like yeah well we can't be together and and uh maybe i should give this thing another try with my wife like after talking it out with her and trying to get some better understanding about his life and and he finds out his father his grandfather um the grandmother thought she he didn't love her because he spent so much time in the garden, but he never revealed to her that he's able to talk to spirits or so they thought that she didn't even know that, right? And that why was he spending so much time out there? Like, didn't he love me? And meanwhile, he did. He just never thought he was good enough for her. So he spent like so much time with the spirits. And he said to his grandson, he's like, you know, I'm happy you're here and all, but you got a life ahead of you, buddy. Like, don't stay here. Like, don't make the same mistakes I have, like by staying here and, and at this, this ghost tree, like this, uh, you know, living in the, in the past, like, and uh, with the dead, like you have your whole life ahead of you, like go work things out with your wife and all this kind of stuff. Right. So yeah, it was just like things like this. Like I've said the same thing about day trip. There's very few books that I have connect with on this level that kind of that like just a human level and and it's a nice uh sweet book like beautiful book and 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 that it's it, it very endearing and and nice and the art team was great and the writing was well done and uh yeah just a nice nice story and it kind of it just you know as you get older these kind of things your things you got to start thinking about and like get yes it's a fictional like situation with ghosts and spirits and trees and stuff like that but this the the, the conversations they got out of it and the um reflecting on one's life and all that and his future like you know what i mean there's a lot there to appreciate and uh actually um think about and i just thought it was super well done um so definitely check this book out it was a, a nice surprise i actually didn't pick this up initially this is also by idw publishing um, I didn't pick this up initially just because I wasn't sure. Even though it looked cool in the previews, I didn't really know Bobby Kernow, and I'm just like I wasn't really familiar with it. Uh, so he's a writer and editor living in San Diego, apparently. 
Uh, previous writing credits include Night of a Thousand Wolves, My Little Pony, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So yeah, so it sounds like he is a editor probably that worked for idw or it also says top shelf productions here yeah bobby Kern on top. so yeah he was probably an editor of one of these companies it sounds like he mostly wrote um uh, licensed property books for idw because they have the uh teenage mutant ninja turtles and my little pony uh but this he knocked this out of the park man this is a great and it's one volume like this is just like a little story it's like five or six issues stands alone on its own this is all you need to pick up beautiful beautiful story and just very well done and definitely definitely worth your time so check this out ghost tree uh what a what an unexpected treat i'm glad i heard another podcast talk about it and i kind of figured you know what i'll give it a whirl i'll pick it up try it out because it, it sounded really cool and it was ghost tree uh great book guys check it out and that will do it for today guys i'll see you guys probably in the next day or two if you're listening to these as these come out uh, like I mentioned, as long as it doesn't interfere with our regular uh, schedule of shows coming out, uh, you'll probably see three or four of these leading into the weekend, and including the weekend coming out for the next week or two till I'm all caught up. That's about six or several episodes, um, you know, counting if I was actually releasing them out on time weekly. Because <laughs> And that's how many books I've read that I need to talk about. So I got to get through this backlog, guys. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.